Uh, welcome to Cool Atlanta. Um, it's great to see you all. First thing, as Brett reminded me, uh, this is the first time you've been on campus in two years. So um, welcome back to football. Uh, welcome back to actually live football. So we're uh, thrilled to be here today, first day of camp, and uh, uh, we're excited about you know the season coming up, excited about all the changes we made during the off season, excited about our new coach, general manager, um, every reason for our fans to be enthused, and, and uh, we look forward to seeing them in the stadium uh, before we know it. So with that, let me just open it up to questions, and uh, DL? Yeah, uh, Arthur, the new beginning, what, um, what were you most excited about yeah. to come out here and look at, at practice today as the team uh, starts off in a new uh, journey here? Well, I think the thing I'm, I'm, I'm excited about uh, has something to do with today, but probably a lot to do with what's happened since we've hired Coach Smith and, and, uh, and Terry Fontenot. And I, I think uh, all the things that we had anticipated in terms of their attention to detail, um, you know, the, the, the intellect in which they're approaching the work, their ability to analyze our existing roster, look forward to the, the roster coming up. Um, I think Terry, uh, both of them, Terry and Arthur, have both done a very good job, I think, in understanding, understanding because of the salary cap situation this year, we have a lot of opportunities with vets uh, that ordinarily might, might not come our way and have fully taken advantage of that, I think, in a variety of uh, positions. So, and I think Terry's shown that, you know, 18 years in New Orleans, one of the things I think he did particularly well on the pro side. And, uh, you know, Coach Smith is, uh, you know, he's got, a, he's got a great mind and we, we're seeing that. So um, we're excited about first day of practice. We're excited about the beginning of the season and uh, we'll take it from there. But do we feel as good as we can right now. Your expectations for a rookie tight end, Kyle Pitts? Yeah. Uh, they're high, like all of us. <laughs> and I, I think, you know, there are a lot of things you have to like about Kyle Pitts is that, you know, beyond his athletic ability and what he's done, you know, over the years and proven himself is that, you know, he, he's got a lot of humility. Um, he's a very good listener, very good learner. Um, be, a, be asking a lot of questions of a lot of people that are experienced that are here. I think he's going to be a great team leader and I think he's going to perform very well on the field. The fact that we can use him in multiple ways, I think, very much fits Coach, Coach Smith's uh, offensive play design. So I'm not sure where you'll find him. Probably you won't find him at quarterback. That may be the only position he won't be playing. But we're looking forward to seeing Kyle on the field and playing. And he is as well, too, for sure. Michael, at what, at what point did you realize that you were going to move to Julio? Move to Tegan? Move Julio. So you're going to trade Julio. Oh, oh, what point did Julio. you realize that? Like, what were those conversations like with Terry? Yeah, well, I mean, we, you know, we did not realize it, you know, at the end of this last season and didn't realize it going into this season. I think, you know, Julio made it clear that he, uh, you know, he had um, certain aspirations and uh, wanted, to, wanted to do it someplace else. That was not our original intent. We uh, have tremendous reg regard for the player and for the human being as well. And, uh, He's given us 10 great years, and uh, that's about half of my ownership and set all kinds of records. But, you know, I think this time was right for him to move on, and I think that the coach did what he could and general manager did what they could to try to have him stay here. But, you know, he was ready to move and ready to move. So one thing about football is that you want, you know, you want a locker room with everybody who does want to be here. You don't want players, any of the players, whether it's number one or number 53, to feel like they want to be someplace else. So I think it'll work out for us well and it'll work out, for, you know, hope, hopefully for him well too. He said he was going to be a Falcon for life. He right. Like, yeah. I, what, what was that like for you on a personal level to see him, A, want to get traded and then to yeah. actually see him? Well, I think the part that just bothered me personally was the fact that he expressed that he, he wanted to be traded. I mean, I, you know, we had a 10-year relationship. I think it was a good relationship. It was certainly productive. He's a Hall of Fame player. Uh, and uh, so I, I was, you know, I was disappointed he, he felt that way. Uh, for whatever reasons, I'm not sure. I was unable to speak with him myself, although I tried to. But, uh, you know, I, he felt the way he felt and, and therefore it's ready to make a change. So uh, we have 90 guys out here that uh, are all committed. They're ready to be here. They're excited to be here. They want to lead. Uh, they want to make a difference for the Falcons. So I think they will. So had you spoken to him at any point? No, I have not. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think you know, you can go back to the comment or the question this gentleman asked about Julio. I think he, you know, he feels he wants players that want to be here. Uh, he doesn't want to have to coach players that he's never had to manage before, and Julio was not one of them. And so, um, you know, he did the best he could, and uh, the organization did, and after the decision was made, he was ready to move on. 
And, um, you know, I, I think his attitude is, you know, is exactly correct. So I, I, uh, the standard is high. It should be high. This is the NFL. It's the top of the heap in American football. So, uh, you know, and we want to we want to get where we need to be. Uh, we've made a lot of commitments over the years to have a competitive team. Uh, that has been our goal since I brought the team in 2001. And um, you know, we've had a long run of a very a very strong successful run. The last three years, not not so much. So we think we have a, a great combination with Coach Smith and and the general manager Terry Fontenot. Jeff, I would say one of the things that impressed me during the interview process, which was a long process, he went through first, second, third round interviews, and eventually in person, et cetera. He's very smart. Um, uh, and also, I think he, uh, he's a very good listener. Um, I think he's, he's got a sense of uh, confidence about himself, but also a pretty good sense of humility, too. And so he, uh, he doesn't assume he has all the answers. He knows what he wants the team to look like and play like. Um, he knows exactly the kind of moves he's going to have to make to get there. And he's, he, has, he has a clear sense of direction. I mean, he was, you know, one of the top offensive coordinators in the NFL the last couple of years, not in terms of, you know, kicking field goals, but actually scoring touchdowns 75% in the red zone, which is one of the areas that, you know, in the NFL, you, you're going to win some games by field goals, but you got to be able to score seven points. And, uh, and I think uh, he's, he's smart, um, really smart. Um, but he's not smart because he tells you he's smart. He's just smart because when you listen to him, he, you realize he's thought through, you know, all the implications of going this way versus this way versus this way. Thought through his options, thinking down the road a little bit, which is nice from a head coach. Sometimes head coaches will, you know, tend to focus Sunday to Sunday, which I understand. But I think he's got the ability to focus both Sunday to Sunday as well as thinking in the longer term. And then a follow-up. You've you done this a few times. Yeah. The new coach for state training. Yeah. Enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, that's great. What have you learned um, from the first time you did this to continue? Well, I think you learn that you, you don't you don't win games uh, you, you don't win in the first day of training camp. I mean, but I think it's a building process, and you you have to understand that. I I remember years ago when um, when Bobby Bethard was here, and I was upset when we didn't win a preseason game. Bobby sat me down and said, "Let me tell you, son." Um, he said, "You know, I was in Washington twelve years, four years. We went to the Super Bowl. We won three of them." The years we won, we never won. We never won a preseason game. So you learn to keep things in perspective, and I think you understand it's a process that you're building towards. You want to get to the starting line. You want to be healthy. You want to have a, you know clear definition. You want what the team to look like, and I think the coach and Terry both have that. So, um, yes, ma'am. Going off of that, how would you define a successful training camp for the season? I think I think you define it. If you look at a, a process, you know, you start with you know start with the off season. You know, start with free agency, draft, et cetera, et cetera. Then you work on you know free agency again. You know, players now become available. We signed a tackle the other day, et cetera. So. I mean, I think you look at the long-term process and you're moving in that direction. Um, you had a defined process and you're following more or less that line. Uh, you feel good about where you are in terms of, um, you know, making, making those changes. And I, and, I, and I feel good about where we are. I think they both have a great relationship. One of the things I liked about um, their connection with each other is that it wasn't kind of predetermined. So Terry actually didn't know uh, Arthur when we first interviewed him. Interview talking to Terry by the second or third time we asked him well have you spent time with coach Smith he said I, I haven't I don't know him. I mean so I called him because I knew he was a candidate so I think that you know the commitment is really to the coaches to the players based on standards and performance as, a, as opposed to based on you know a long history with this guy which is good in some cases in some cases not so good so I feel like you know on the offensive side we got a great play caller on the defensive side I think we were very fortunate to get Dean Pease and have him come back out of retirement. And that's a tribute to Coach Smith. I mean, that's the reason he's here, uh, hopefully for Atlanta, but he's reason here because of uh, Coach Smith. So, you know, he's got, uh, you know, he's got a lot of history, a lot of great experience, um, a lot of very successful experience. Uh, they'll probably have guys, you know, starting to rush when they get off the bus. You don't know where they're going to be coming from, but that's the way he, you know, he calls defenses. So, uh, we're excited about having him and the whole coaching staff. Very experienced, very knowledgeable. Yes, sir. Past, I'm sorry. How would you describe this just past year for you between you know dealing with the COVID protocols, and, you know multiple coaching hires for both teams that you own? What's it just been like for you? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, for a guy who doesn't have a lot of patience, um, it's been a very difficult year. And I say you don't have patience. I don't have patience, really. It's not about about myself. It's for our fans, whether it be the Falcon fans or Atlanta United fans. Uh, 
uh, in either case, it's uh, you know I um, I feel their pain. Uh, I, I feel their their anxiety or depression when they have it. Uh, it's been a hard year on America. It's been a hard year in the world. And uh, uh, so I think you know we have to do our part this year to cheer people up. And I think we will. I mean I think there's not a lot of press about us, uh, which is okay. I, I'm happy flying beneath the radar. Uh, and I think our team is as well, but um, I, I, I think we're going to be uh, very successful this year. I really do. You know. Yeah. To that, to that question, Arthur, yeah. uh, what do you think your level of patience will be now? You do regime and a win now mentality for everybody in the NFL, and what do you hope? Well, patience level will be. You know, I, the, you have to have. I mean, I'm not a patient person by by nature, and that you know that's good for the fans. It's good for our franchise. It's good for all of our businesses. You know, good good is the enemy of great to me, and so. You know, I'm always trying to find a way to get better, and sometimes that's that's not easy. Our, our staff will tell you sometimes, oh, boy, he's you know got very high standards, and I do. Um, so I I think uh, you know we will um, we have aspirations. Uh, we understand the NFL. You, you can't necessarily it's, you know it's a long season, 17 games this year, single game elimination, you get to the playoffs. That's our first goal. Our first goal is to win our division, et cetera, and then take it from there. And uh, um, but as long as we're doing everything we can do, that's all you can ask people to do. But uh, you want creative thinking. You want people that are going to, you know, push the envelope. You want people that have the same stance that you do. You want people that don't sleep at night sometimes because we're not where we should be and trying to figure out how do I get a better, you know, a better, better performance from the team. So I think we have all that. Um, but, you know, I mean, time will tell, but I have full confidence in this group. I truly do. So. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Blank, sort of bouncing off of uh, Alice's question, uh, how would you assess the state of the franchise regarding Atlanta United, given everything that's happened in the last month? How would the state of, I'm sorry. The state of the franchise regarding Atlanta United, given yeah. everything that's happened in the last month? Yeah, well, you know, you're not happy when you have to turn over coaches the way we've had to, and there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, you point finger, finger at somebody, three point back at you. So you got to start out with, like, what could we have done better? Um, I think in this last coach, uh, there's some things in terms of cultural uh, aspirations and the way he was treating our players, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, we probably could have done a little better job up front in the homework uh, on that. Uh, he's certainly, you know, from a technical standpoint, very well qualified. So, um, you know, you learn from those lessons and you move on. Um, and uh, so I, I have, you know, I think we have the nucleus of a really good, a really good squad. Um, and I want to, you know, you have to show appreciation true appreciation for our fans who have been incredible on the AU side and on the Falcon side as well. Uh, we got a tremendous amount of support from Fa Falcon season ticket holders this year. And AU can, you know, the last match we had 67,000 people in the building. So, you know, um, I love our fans. I love the energy. I love their commitment, their passion, uh, all the things they give us. Uh, and we want to give them back a product that's equally important to them. Well, I think, you know, the best you can do is put your arm around them. And, and uh, you know, it's not a matter of personal opinion. I mean, my personal opinion is that, you know, everybody in the United States should have a, a vaccine that can be of age. Um, but that's, you know, uh, that's their choice. Uh, I think it's up to us to share with them not what we think, but what the science says and what, what the doctor says, what the medical professional says. Um, and uh, if they have, you know, issues or questions they want to talk about, make sure that talking to, you know, not necessarily their buddies, but talking to people who actually have the knowledge to do that. We have a very high vaccination rate uh, for the Falcons and, and uh, you know, just a couple of players left. And, you know, they're, they're taking the right steps now as well. So we're dealing again with the resurgence with this uh, new variant. And uh, the people who have not had vaccinations are getting sick. Uh, and uh, even some have vaccinations are getting sick, but that's a very small percentage. Basically, the ones that are not vaccinated are getting sick. Now, it happens to be even more contagious, probably six times more so than ever before. And so I think, you know, the, the vaccine isn't going to be a cure-all, but it's going to keep you out of the hospital. It's going to keep you, you know, um, you know in, in a situation where you don't fear for your life, if you will. So I think I would just encourage people strongly, as strongly as I can as an individual, as somebody that cares about community and life of everybody that they ought to get vaccinated, you know, truly should. And, you know, today we have plenty, plenty of product available in America. Um, so you can get a vaccine really almost any day. So I would encourage everybody to do it strongly.